Thanksgiving demo. Um, as you know, we're working under pandemic conditions and we're trying to socially distance and be safe. But while I do this turkey demo, I'm gonna remove my mask and now I can breathe a little bit. Um, so welcome and thank you for all coming to my, one of my last turkey demos. Uh, I've been doing this demo for over 30 years and I'm gonna um, show you how to debone the turkey. I have, wanna give a big shout out to all my colleagues here at Trade Tech uh, for helping. A special shout out to my videographer right now, Pauline Chow, who set this whole uh, demonstration up via Zoom. Uh, my student workers, um, my performing chair, Chef Gilligan, um, all a lot of things, because all I do is the work and have nothing to do with the Zoom. So thank you all for attending this morning as you get started. Um, again, we're gonna follow some safety and sanitation rules. As you can see my turkey, it is sitting on ice. It is ready to go. Um, I do have a 17 and a half pound turkey here. Um, and I'm just gonna show you how to, that I am gonna debone it and then stuff it. And then we'll go from here. And one of my colleagues, uh, Chef Robles, is gonna uh, assist me in trusting it because he does that a whole lot better than I do. But if you do have any questions during the demonstration, uh, please feel, feel free to uh, put it in the chat. And then from the chat, um, we'll be answer, answering questions. And at the end, I'll be more than willing to help anybody out with any questions that's needed, okay? So we're gonna get started. And like you see here, we have a little palm turkey here as it's sitting on its legs and its wings. The breast is in the front. And I'm gonna start, this is one of the most important things, but not anymore, only because I actually do this demonstration in half. I used to do a whole turkey, but it's harder and harder to get smaller turkeys. So I'm actually gonna do this in two um, separate um, sections. Um, and you'll see that as we go along. But if you could stand up your turkey and to make life a little easier, you wanna take the wings and kind of um, spread them apart so that when you come around the wing joint, you'll be able to dislocate the leg. So when they talk about breaking bones, it's about breaking bones. Bada bing, bada bing. And you can separate that out. And also on the drumstick and the thigh. Pop it out. You can kind of hear it pop. The bigger the turkeys, I need a milk crate to stand on. All right, there you go. Just loosen them up a little, a little exercise. I'm gonna get started. And we're gonna start here on the very back side of the turkey, on the back ball. And we're just gonna take our chest knife, our, our, I'm sorry, our bony knife, and just run a straight line right down the middle. And as we do so, um, if you've never boned out a chicken or a turkey or anything else, or even a fish, um, the key to the fabrication of any animal is to try to do nice small cuts. So I'm basically using just about this much of my knife to get around each one of the bones. And just again, keeping my knife as close to the carcass and trimming around. Popping the joint again, a little difficult. This is the most difficult part right here. Of course, this didn't happen yesterday when we were not on film, but today, of course, it's giving me a little problem. There we go. I'm just going to turn this around. Come down on the wing tip. And although I used to remove the wing tips, I find keeping a little bit of the meat actually on that first joint is important to give more surface space when I'm actually cutting out the 
right here. So now that this has been removed, right here, if you can kind of see, this is all what we consider the breast meat. And I'm gonna just gently run my knife right against the breast plate, as close once again to the carcass, without leaving too much. Sorry, can't do it backwards, so I'm sure you probably can't see a lot of this. And just removing and trimming down. I'll be able to turn it around in a second, so you'll see it just away from the bone. Okay, and I'm going to just start on the other side as well. Chef, you have 57 viewers. Wow, a lot of people out there today. Thank you for coming to see my turkey demo. Don't know if my mom is out there, but mom, I love you if you're watching. This one came out a lot easier. This side of the thigh bone. So we have a question. If I want to brine the turkey, should I do it after the turkey is deboned or before? So great question. I think it'll make it a little easier to brine it after you debone it. Um, again, I'm not sure how long you want to let it sit in the brine, but um, either way would work. But I think you'd get a little bit better flavor profile taking off the bone and it'll make it a little easier. So yeah, great question. So now that we have you can kind of see the pockets of the limbo. I'm just running my knife towards the end. And again, when I used to do this as a whole turkey stuff, I just find it's a little easier. You don't want to remove. So here we go. The actual body caucus that what are we going to use this for? My class 130 uh, two out there. Stop, right? That's where we're going to make our gravy. Now, if you can see, I have wing tip, wings and legs. And we're gonna just take our wing tip first, and I'm just gonna open up a pocket against the first joint. Just again, to remove and to leave as much meat as possible to help in the stuffing and folding. And 30 years of doing this, I never thought I'd have to do it virtual, but I guess that's the new normal anymore. I did a workout doing this also, so at least I won't have to go to the gym today. Yeah? <laughs> so once again, if you want to save this for some chicken wings, chicken wings. Oh, yeah. Chicken wings, you can make them chicken wings, or once again, add it to your stockpile. On the thigh, I'm going to run my knife right against the thigh ball. Any other questions out there? Almost kind of like crunching it. That. Coming back to the swing side, wing tip on this side. Someone asked, what is the turkey being stuffed with? So the turkey that I made, I made a, what I call a Texas toast stuffing. 
I use what we know Texas toast, thin, thick slice. I don't know, some people use it for French toast. Uh, I don't know, the, the cheap steak houses use it for garlic toast, I guess. Um, but I like it just because it's a little thicker and it makes uh, thick coupons. And I think I toasted the Texas toast stuffing with the rest of the um, side, yes? Yes. So um, I think it's up there. And mine is a basic bread stuffing. Um, I put some of these onions in it. I like mine with corn. But if you want to put nuts or raisins or oysters or anything you like, the stuffing, feel free to be as creative as, as you like it to be. That was from Chef Jesse at LA Mission College. Hey, Chef Jesse, how you doing? Is this Chef Gail? Last <laughs> thigh bone. Goodness. Again, pack this off. I think this is Chef Gail. She asked, how much would you charge for that turkey? Do this turkey? <laughs> how much would you Too charge? Too much. So don't everybody <laughs> ask. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's not that it's that hard, folks. Um, obviously, the cost of the turkey, my time, my time is expensive. Um, but now we could kind of zoom in. And again, um, for those of you that are taking Garmage and talk about a Valentine, I'm going to kind of turn this into two Valentines, although I am using breast meat. Um, this is completely boned out, except for the drumsticks that I use for presentation. And when you see the finished product, you'll know why. Um, thigh meat, thigh meat, dog meat, for those that like it. I like to create a little pocket in there as well, open that up. And although I have the breast laying here, these are the turkey tenders that I'm actually going to butterfly open a little bit. And the reason being, I am trying to create as much surface space as possible for me to roll it. So once again, I've got turkey tenders right here, and I'm going to open it up a little bit. And again, my knife is doing small, thin cuts. So the term butterflying is to kind of open up and prevent some surface, um, to create some extra surface space. Down here, to make it easy to roll, this part is a little thicker. So once again, I'm going to take my knife and just make small cuts just to kind of open up and create a pocket. The same thing on this side. Open up to create a pocket. And I have a nice flat, make sure there's no big tendons, any bones, hopefully not. And now we're going to season our turkey. So before we start seasoning, any questions on the deboning? Yes. Um, Veronica asked, do you ever use a cornbread stuffing? Do you have a good recipe? I'm not a cornbread fan, but um, I'm sure we can find you a good recipe. Um, and again, it's just it's preference of what it is that you actually like. So, you know, again, uh, whether it's cornbread or Texas toast or brioche or French bread or, I don't know, hamburger rolls, if you have them left over and you want to dice them up, for God's sakes, you know. But it's all what goes in the seasoning that makes the bread. I do like cornbread. Uh, I just, you know, as far as stuffing goes, for me, um, kind of a little bit more traditional. So, but I hope that answered a little bit. We'll try to get your recipe for that. Yeah, thank you, Chef. Uh, Chef Jesse asks, what will be the final internal temperature, cooking temperature and cooking time approximately for this size of turkey? So this size bird at a conventional oven, I say conventional because here at work we have convection ovens. It took about an hour and 45 minutes for this to be cooked at home. And I'll, once I show you and cut it up, um, you're going to see this done as a um, separate, so maybe about two hours, maybe two hours and 15 minutes. I'm literally going to open up and cut it right down the middle. And I'm going to work with two separate areas at a time. So I'm going to ask you to take this way. Andrew, can you take this way right here? Let's 
again, I'm just trying to create a pocket. I'm going to open this side a little bit more. The internal temperature of the turkey should reach 165 degrees. Again, for those of you in my survey class that are watching this, I'll do this one over the temperatures. And it's very important to make sure that um, I know the stuffing should get to that temperature too, but I hate to say it, um, it's probably never going to get to 165, but it should at least get to 140. So now I'm going to take some seasoning and I'm going to start off with some black pepper. And once again, this is your own turkey. You season it the way you like it. I have my mixture of my seasoning salt. Again, kind of like a Lowry's, but it's a chef soup. All right, chef, uh, a couple of questions. Um, what do you do to prevent dryness? Don't overcook it. <laughs> uh, when you put it in the oven, I will be cooking this with a little middle cloth. Add some garlic and poultry seasoning to go on. Um, the Miracle helps to create a little moisture when you cook it. I'm using a little dark chili as well in this right now. Um, but really overcooking it. And my secret ingredient that is no longer going to be a secret, a little curry powder. So I just like a little curry powder on mine. Doesn't need to be that much. And we're ready to go. So I hope that answers a couple questions. Now for my stuffing, this is where I think I want to put the lodge first. They, they go on better with that. Sorry, technical difficulties with gloves <laughs> when your hands are wet. Uh, some grinding questions. Grinding. So after finishing deboning, can you apply a dry brine? Absolutely. Um, yes, I would definitely agree that you could uh, put like a dry rub. Uh, I kind of, you see me just season this up pretty well right now. So this is kind of like my dry rub. If you have this done the day before, again, that will kind of uh, marinate into the chicken, uh, into the turkey. I mean, I also season my turkey with the same ingredients. Um, so again, you usually have that. And and how long should you brine it? Um, I'm not a brining expert, but I have a colleague here that might be able to help me. Uh, once he comes back this way real quick, Jeff Paisan maybe, uh, you need some, I'm not sure how long, how long should we brine something? I'm not the brining expert. How long should we? Depending if you inject it or not. If you inject it or not, how long should it take? If you do inject it. Inject it, maybe. Two days. There you go. So, and my colleague. If you have a nice series and then you get everything, then of course you can have any uh, issues or you know the animal. Of course, sometimes you have just the brand on the outside, you have to wait a little bit you know, that there's, there's this um, movement of the brand through the series of the meat. So it takes maybe like one week to have everything completely uh, brand. So I hope that answers the question. I'm not a liner, so this way right here. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Lost a little bit of the back end on here, but I think it'll be all right. My colleague Chef Robles will come in to help me trust it. But there you have a stuffed turkey. And again, it might even look like a little bit of a rabbit here. Not too long, but not a rabbit, but uh, doesn't quite look like a turkey anymore. But good balancing, right? Stuff like beautiful. I love it. Here you go, Chef. Wait, we want to see later. We're going to see the magic of television. Oh, yeah. We're going to stick around. We're around. Hey, I got a How many people are doing like that? Um, 72. 73. Okay, so there's these questions right here. Every day to turkeys in the past, do you change up the seasoning for those birds? 
Um, those of you out there, um, I don't really um, worry about the actual, um, what type of bird it is. I buy a you know, decent quality. So um, as far as the breeds, I mean, unless you're really picky, I guess I'm not that picky about that, but um, I'll answer some more of these questions right at the end uh, while uh, keep uh, attention to Chef Robles. He's gonna show you how to trust it. All right, guys, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. So uh, trusting the, the bird really for uh, a few reasons. If you're cooking the whole bird, uh, trusting really helps because it holds the uh, chick uh, together a lot better, especially with something like this that's already been um, that's already been deboned. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can trust, but what you're going to want is some butcher's twine. And um, the butcher's twine is, is uh, something that you can find you can find at the uh, at the store pretty readily available. What you do want to do is is just make sure that you have enough. Uh, I have about I have about three feet of butcher's twine here. Um, just to make sure that you have a little bit extra. It's better to have a little bit extra than, than not quite enough. And so what I'm gonna do is um, take a little bit of the twine. I'm gonna start at the opposite end of the leg and run that butcher's twine all the way down to the front. And then make, make a little knot at one end. Okay. And then what you want to do is grab uh, that butcher's twine and then you want to make a, a, a noose. You want to make a, a loop with it. Okay. So hold that butcher's twine out, put your hand in there, and then make a little noose. And then what you're going to do is repeat the process. Pulling that back and then just gently find that, making it snug. So if you were going to uh, do a roast, for example, and you want to truss that, typically if you're going to truss, uh, this is also a good way for you to determine how many portions you're going to get. And so you, you want to do maybe a quarter inch separation in between each, uh, each loop. Now, you really just want to do this to secure the stuffing. I don't over uh, tighten the butcher's twine because you also want to make sure that you're giving a chance to uh, cook that turkey thoroughly. If you, if you make it really, really snug, especially if your if your um, stuffing wasn't wasn't cooked, then what you can run into is the problem of not being able to cook that turkey all the way through because it's, it's just a little bit too tight. You have a um, you have a hard time getting that heat distributed internally, cooking that turkey all the way through. So if you do have a lot of stuffing, what you can do is also flatten out that stuffing. But as we're getting here towards the end, I'm going to go ahead and take that extra flap that Chef uh, Chef bone and then we're going to use that for sealing that pocket and to secure that. So what I like to do at this point is to just uh, roll the turkey or the chicken whatever it is that you're touching, roll it over. Okay, to the opposite end. And then what I'm gonna do is loop that, put your spline around, what's left of it, fasten that. Further uh, tightening that butcher's point is securing that shape. Our oven is preheated right now to 350 degrees. 
Now, this is something that, depending on the type of oven that you have, uh, it's going to cook for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours, or, or two hours, and a quarter. two and a quarter, uh, or until the, the turkey is at uh, the proper temperature. Now, once I'm all the way at the end, what I'm going to do is cover once again that pocket that was created. Turn the bird over one more time. Any excess fat you can remove. And then now we're back to where we started. Make sure you leave a little bit of butcher's point uh, on the first knot so that you can finish tying that once you make a full uh, circle. So there's our turkey leg that has been trussed. Now this is going to go into a uh, 200 pan after we season. Uh, the top of it is the same seasoning that Chef uh, used. It's going to go into a 200 pan near cloth. Um, I sometimes put a little bit of chicken stock, or I'll, I'll put, uh, if you have a little bit of white wine, that's also sometimes a good idea to put just a little bit of liquid in the mirepoix. Turkey goes on top, and that will also uh, ensure that you have a little bit more moisture to prevent over drying the turkey. Um, to the question of how to prevent it from overcooking, because there's a good amount of seasoning on the, on the surface of the turkey, um, if you start to notice that you're getting too much color before your turkey is uh, thoroughly cooked, then uh, you can tent it, put a little bit of foil on top, and then uh, just make sure that it's, it's uh, staying nice and moist. You can always turn up the heat uh, right before you're ready to serve it to get really nice crispy uh, skin on the surface. If you're worried that you know the moisture might have made it a little bit soft, and that's that's also a good idea um, just to get your presentation uh, and, and finish your cooking up. Yeah. Thank you, Chef Roland. What a beautiful job on trusting it. So as we just talked about, and, and Chef made a lot of really good comments. Um, you know, putting some aluminum foil, maybe halfway through, it's going to get the initial browning on it. It's just going to keep off, put a little bit of aluminum foil, like you said, tent it. Uh, that'll create a little bit of moisture, too. Like we said, we have a lot of better mirror cloth, turkey stock as my bones. As I debone it, first thing I do is I roast my turkey bones and get them in the oven. Um, and then I create my stock. But I'm going to use the same seasoning. So once again, a little chili powder, a little seasoning salt. Ingredient, a little cumin, a little curry. And again, this is everybody's it's your own taste buds if you'd like to do, uh, flavor it with. A little poultry seasoning if we have some. And black pepper. And this is just ready to go. And we're going to roast this off. And like I said here, we're going to do it for about um, an hour and a half to an hour and uh, 45 minutes. And um, we'll be right back after a 30 minute break, 30 second break, not 30 minutes, 30 second break. All right. I put it in the oven uncovered, and when it starts to get a little brown, if it's getting too brown, I'll cover it and tent it. Yep, chop it up the other side. Now, Turkey, so whoever asks how long it takes, magic. 
So please, um, this was my trusting job was not quite as uh, professional as Jeff Wolbisky, but I'm gonna remove and cut all the strings because obviously we do not wanna create any physical hazards. Definitely have a lot of gloves available when they're at home, folks. <laughs> I like my serrated knife, some of you already know. <laughs> <laughs> How's your bowling average? Who's asking that? <laughs> I want to know who that came from. Victor. Victor. Victor Castro, I don't bowl anymore. I only golf. <laughs> so as you can see, these are beautiful medallions that are stuffed, slices nicely, literally a full beautiful part. I'm gonna get a nice platter right here. Change little places to make it look a little presentable. Have a nice uh, platter set up. And again, folks, however you like to decorate or serve it to your family. Stuffed bone turkey. Folks, this was a 17 pound turkey. Notice I only did one. I have the other one. So this in itself is gonna feed at least six people right here. Six, two slices, one, two, three, four, five. I got barely five slices. I have another five or six slices to go. Um, I have you know another whole side. So again, even at a 17 pound turkey, someone's gonna get the leg, you know, one of your kids is gonna get the leg. But again, you can see this is all usable. So when people say, do I always debone it? I debone it because I, it's easier for me. You know, when you have everything else going on, you have, don't have to worry about carving it at the table. This is done. I could do it the day before, pop it in the oven first thing in the morning. And uh, it's the first thing that comes out, it sits, it rests, and then I can take care of all my other sides. So again, the questions are out there. I'll be more than willing to help them, um, answer any questions as they come in. But I hope you enjoyed my turkey demo. Most familiar faces out there, I don't get to see you all, but thank you for coming. We really appreciate it. A big round hand of to Chef Robles for helping me out. And again, my whole team here at um, Trade Tech that has been more than generous of helping me and putting this together. I really do appreciate it. Friends far and near, hello again. Haven't seen you for a while. A couple of names I haven't seen. So, questions? Um, how long should you let it rest after taking it out of the oven? A good half an hour. Definitely give it a half an hour. Um, again, if you have even like a microwave, just to hold it in that unit and it'll keep it um, warm. Um, you know, I, I say shut off the oven, but then I, I don't want it to get too dried out. Um, you know, and again, make your great gravy, um, you know, from the roasted bones and the turkey stock. Okay. 
Um, what do you like to do with the leftovers? So um, this in itself, I buy a nice French baguette and the French baguette I take and I take out all the bread and I actually put my stuffing in, in the baguette and use that as the filling for the bread and make a really good uh, fresh cranberry relish. And I put that on my turkey sandwich. Uh, obviously the, the good old uh, turkey pot pies, turkey pot soup, um, you know, I don't, you know, endless, endless varieties there which you can make. I make kind of like, um, I don't know what it's called this, but like a turkey tetrazzini, um, turkey thin and leftover with uh, egg noodles and mix it all together. I like that. So, I mean, the, again, it's countless countless ways that you can use it up. Is there a size of bird that you recommend? So the size is a, it's a good question, what size? Um, again, I used to do this with um, a whole bird, 10 to 12 pounds, um, obviously with a few, a few people, but doing the whole turkey, uh, using the whole bird at work, uh, because we were, it was harder and harder to get like a smaller bird. Uh, so right now, I, I think in the 14 to 18, 20 pound um, range is really good. Um, and like I said, doing it in two, two sections. So um, we could even bring over the other turkey right here and I'll just show you. Um, I did the whole turkey yesterday. And again, this was um, a 16 and a half pound bird. And again, this is the other side of it. Um, and so I have both sides and you can see it feeds a lot. But anything over the 20 pounder, you know, it's very hard to um, create even pockets and you know, getting the stuffing in there, but it's all in one. Do you brush any oil or butter on the skin in addition to the spices before it goes in the oven? Again, it's a personal preference. I don't feel I need to, especially here at school. Um, we work in a combi oven. I put a little steam, about 10 to 15% steam, so it keeps it a little bit moisture. So again, answering the question to uh, someone that asked it earlier, how to keep it moist, like Chef Goldman said, a little stock in the pan, the milk will create some moisture. Um, but if you want to brush it or baste it, more power to you, it tastes good. Um, I'm always watching my fat calories, so I try not to have to add more fat, you know, like, I mean, so yeah. Uh, did you baste it during cooking? I did not baste this at all. Um, like I said, I tented it with aluminum halfway through the cooking process. And then I went ahead and um, just the last 10 minutes, I took the aluminum back off just to get a, a crispier um, outside. Because once you get that crispy outside, moisture is gonna, you know, um, you know, soften the bird again. So the last 15, 20 minutes, uh, last 10, 15 minutes, I just crank up the oven and go on again, just to get it crispy again. In your opinion, do you think a deboned way is the way to go or traditional? You know, that, that's a hard, that's a hard call. I know a lot of uh, friends and family, you know, they want to see the whole turkey on the table and you pull this out and they go, what's that? What is that? Uh, but to me, I will be honest with you, uh, I brought, I brought this turkey to uh, many Thanksgiving dinners. I never, um, I always get invited back. So, um, you know, it's a good thing. And even though you say how much does it cost, obviously for friends and family, um, I just get invited because they know the turkey's coming, so they don't have to make the turkey. <laughs> so I know it doesn't look like the traditional type, um, but for me, I just found 30 years plus of doing this. Um, I learned this when I was in, in industry 30 plus years ago, and I have not stopped doing it. And like I said, um, it's all about what you like, your preference. You want to go with a traditional turkey by all means. Um, I do recommend and one of the things about stuffing this without the bones, it's a little safer because the blood is not dripping into, the blood from the bones is not dripping into the stuffing, so it makes it safer. But if you were to stuff a whole turkey that has bones in it, that dripping is going to drop into the stuffing, and that's why it's very important to make sure you get it to the right temperature. So even though the stuffing doesn't quite reach the 165, it was pre-cooked, and it does get above the 135 to 40 degrees. Does the mirepoix and broth at the bottom of the pan make the bird soggy? It does make it a little soggy. So yes, um, those last 10 to 15 minutes, you want to crank up the oven and make sure you can crisp it back up. So in one sense, it's not that it's soggy, but it gives some moisture so the turkey's not as dry. Is it a must to cook separately considering home ovens are small? It's not a must, but again, surface space 
takes a lot. So I kind of try to do it in one level, my lower level, and my, my, my one oven rack and the, the bottom oven rack. If you do put them together, try to give a little bit of space. I know in a 200 pan or some of the roasting pans, the disposable roasting pads, it's really tight. I will tell you it's going to take a little longer to cook. So if it's possible, and you can kind of do it separately, um, just in two separate pans, that's fine. Um, again, if I can get this, if, if cooking time is shorter than a traditional turkey, regardless. So if you're looking at a 20 pound bird, it's going to take you a good four hours. Um, this, even if you did the first one, and then you're able to hold it, and then you have, you know, you can use the other one after it or next to it, um, however it works for you. Will it still get soggy if you cook it on a rack? Again, moisture is moisture. It probably will stay less soggy. And again, folks, this is really not soggy, but the, the way to answer the question of getting soggy or is just to finish it off with a you know, higher temperature right at the end, especially in convection. Okay, a couple more questions. That's all I, That's all we have right now. Can you see if there's a Doris Biden bomb on that pencil? Yes. Let's All righty, folks. It's been my pleasure, my honor, working with this great group of people that I've had the pleasure of. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. I appreciate it. Everybody else, I don't see all of you. They're saying thank you. They're saying it's beautiful. And thank you also. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving to your loved ones. Stay safe. Remember, we're in a pandemic. Wear your mask. Sit outside. Don't be enclosed in, you know, enclosed areas. And if you are, put your masks back on as I'm going to grab mine right now um, and get back to work. So love you all. Take care. Woo!